Welcome back hunters, today we're talking about Bow's new skill. Stake Thrust is a really cool addition to the bow arsenal. It's kind of like the Gunland Stake back in Monster Hunter World, where once it's planted on the monster, all your hits from the weapon near the stake deal extra damage from the stake itself. So in this video, we're going to talk about the skill itself, the perks, and then I'll give some examples of how and where to use this skill. Bow is my second favorite weapon in Rise, and while there aren't many amazing changes that came with Sunbreak, Stake Thrust is a really cool skill and it creates some variety in the bow gameplay, and I'm all for it. So the extra damage that comes from the stake occurs when you shoot near the stake itself. So whichever body part you plant on it, you have to target that body part, and even your shots have to be very close to the stake to invoke extra damage. The damage ticks per hit is half the damage of your raw arrow damage. The stake remains on the monster until 12 arrow hits, and then the stake disappears. You cannot place more than one stake on the monster, but you can replace it as many times as you wish. So if the monster moves or you misplaced it the first time, just ignore it and replace it. Now there are two ways to execute this skill, both of them having their appropriate situations. First is you basically click the special action button when your weapon is drawn. This will make your character take a step forward and wherever you make contact with the monster first, the stake will be placed. This is good in situations where you are really close to the monster and you want to be as precise as possible where landing your stake. The second way is after any dodge, you simply click your melee button or the button which you use to apply your coatings, and instead of coatings, it'll perform a stake thrust. Now this method makes your character take a whole side step forward before planting. So it's got a lot more mobility, and it's more ideal in situations where the monster has moved away and you have an opening, but you need to cover some distance first. And I'll point out where these are more appropriate in the situations when we get to the examples. The next feature of the stake thrust I want to mention is that it also applies status damage. If your bow has a status effect, you'll gain a portion of extra status damage with the stake. Each tick from the stake thrust is about one third of the status compared to a regular arrow. More importantly though, if you use the absolute power shots to add some KO damage to your arrows, using the stake thrust is definitely much more efficient to get some faster KOs. Since absolute power shots take up a lot of stamina, the less you have to use, the better. So in this clip, we're using the train dummy, which is like the all time most ideal situation. It takes 8 shots to get a KO without the stake. With the stake thrust, it takes 6 shots on the dummy. So scaling this to monster, this helps accommodate for two reasons. Number one, it just adds some extra KO. Any little bit always helps on a KO, especially as the threshold gets higher and higher per knock. For bows, this will most likely help you to get that second KO. The second reason is KO degradation. This is common that if you don't deal enough KO damage on the head, the previous KO does degrade. And this is much more common with bow users since we have so much time between our power shots that we lose a lot of that KO that stacks up. With the stake thrust though, you gain that extra little bit of KO which basically accounts for that degradation that occurs between combos. So as you can see, it's not anything hugely significant but it does help a little bit. It's definitely not worth going out of your way to make sure you have a stake every time you apply KO damage, which brings me to a very important note. Stake thrust is actually a skill you do not depend on, but more so you utilize when you have the chance. It's a supplementary skill, not a skill that you embed actively in your combos, because the trade-off you get from spending time to apply the stake isn't worth losing max bow charge just to add a little bit more KO. On top of this, the main reason it's also not good to embed in your combos is because it does reset your charge level. So using this after a big knock or an opening is very situational. In situations where you have charge on your bow and you create a big opening like a knock or paralysis, you want your charge level to be as high as possible and you want to constantly output damage. Thus it isn't worth to use the stake thrust and lose your charge since that's also going to reduce the damage coming from the stake thrust. Additionally, the extra damage from the stake thrust is not as much as the bonus damage you get from maintaining charge level 4. Thus, you aren't getting any benefits by breaking combos to apply the stake thrust, you'd rather just stick to your main combos during big openings. This skill fits much better in those windows where you need to recharge your stamina, or the monster is doing too much to fit a whole combo, and so rather than waiting, you can use this opportunity to use the stake thrust to prepare for extra damage when the opportunity arises. So now that we know what the skill is, let's talk about those small opportunities. What I've found is that this skill actually pairs really well with Dodgebolt. Dodgebolt lets you counter attacks just as they hit you and that includes roars. If you successfully counter an attack with Dodgebolt, remember that your charge level goes up by 2 instead of 1 with the charging sidestep. 
So with the stake thrust, you can utilize this skill in a variety of situations to land the stake and then dodge bolt an attack or a roar to regain your charge levels back and then deal some extra damage. Roars are probably some of the best ways to use this. I haven't tested it on all the monsters yet, but my assumption here is that it will depend on certain monsters. Some monsters have long roar windups, giving you enough time to plant the stake and prepare to dodge bolt the roar. A great example here is Tigrex. Since he has an extremely long windup, I have more than enough time to plant the stake and back myself up and then prepare to dodge bolt. Now as you'll see in just a moment, the extra damage went a long way and within seconds I broke Tigrex's head. Monsters like Kushala or Teostra though have very very narrow roar prep. They roar almost immediately as you hit. So if you plant the stake, you probably don't have enough time to dodge bolt, or at the least it's not as easy to consistently time the dodge bolt unlike monsters like Rajang or Malzino. With the roars, it's more ideal to use the short distance stake thrust. At the start of a hunt, you can get close up to a monster before that initial roar and precisely land the stake on the head. This also means that it's always good to start with a stake attack if the monster moves to a new area, since more often than not, a monster tends to roar after moving areas depending on the circumstances. Even if they don't, you have no charge on your bow, so you may as well start by planting that stake for some quick early damage. Moving on, other attacks that you could do this for is any attack that has a long windup, like a big Q that you can notice early on and you can stake thrust before the attack comes at you. Then you can dodge bolt the attack and go straight into your attack. Most of the time with these, you won't be attacking or doing your combos anyway since you'll be preparing to dodge. So let's take Tigrix as an example again. I got a good flinch on him here so that got me some extra hits, but I knew I wouldn't have too much time to do a full combo. So I moved closer and when I saw him take a step back, I knew he was going to charge forward. The charge has a moment delay before he launches off and that was enough for me to get a stake thrust on his head and then dodge bolt immediately. And then I wait for the next opening before I'm damaging his head again to utilize that extra damage from the stake thrust. Now luckily, this was also the end of the hunt so that extra damage was enough to put him over the edge. Alternatively, a narrow window is also where you can fit into stake thrust, like a situation where you can't get a full combo off. Instead, quickly put in that stake then move away and then you can attack and get some extra damage in when you have an opportunity. We have Malzino as an example this time. I know when he gets up from a knock, he goes quickly into another attack. So I just stake thrust right as he's getting up. And then I saw the attack and I just waited until he got clear. And then we can attack him for our damage. So as you can see, using this skill will actually take some very good knowledge of the monster attacks. And thus, the more comfortable you are with the monster, the more opportunities you'll have to fit this stake thrust in and increase your DPS. Another use for this skill is when you have no stamina left. Stake Thrust is a positive stamina skill, meaning you gain back more stamina through the animation than it takes to actually use the skill. If you've ever been in a situation where the monster has an opening and you have time to do more damage but you're running low on stamina, do a quick Stake Thrust and it'll give you a bit of stamina to get more hits in. This is especially helpful when monsters are knocked or paralyzed, it is much more worth to lose your charge and get that Stake Thrust in and then get back to damaging rather than just letting go and losing that charge anyway to gain back some stamina and then attacking again. You're going to lose a lot more time that way, so using the stake thrust will help you get back just enough stamina to just get a couple more hits in and get some extra bonus damage on top of that. For bow builds with stamina surge 3, this will be very apparent to you as your fast stamina recharge will give you a decent amount of stamina back while you're doing just the stake thrust itself. A final note I'll make when using the dodge bolt, if the monster moves out of position or away from you, dodge bolt doesn't help you cover a lot of distance. However, stake thrust after a dodge has a really nice movement capability by performing a sidestep forward. It could be helpful in multiplayer hunts when the monster switches targets, or in a single player when the monster knocks over in a different direction or too far from you. You can utilize the stake thrust animation to basically catch up to the monster and then continue your DPS. Now of course, not everyone uses dodge bolt. If you use charging sidestep, yes you can still use stake thrust mid combo, but I'd say as a golden rule to remember not to give up your DPS. Maintaining a high charge level will always be more worthwhile than using the stake thrust. So as I've mentioned before, you really want to use this skill when you see an attack that you were going to break your combo to dodge anyway, or if the monster is just not in a good position to hit, or as I mentioned, your stamina is getting low. With charging sidestep, you can utilize the stake thrust to get in real quick, plant the stake, and then you can charge sidestep backwards to gain one level of bow charge while creating that distance you need to attack the monster. It's really important to combine this with the charging sidestep backwards, otherwise you are losing quite a bit of DPS. 
Basically, you never want to plant the stake and then immediately attack at level 1 charge. You always want to sidestep to gain that extra level and then continue your damage combo. And that's about it for the stake thrust, guys. It's such a cool skill. I wish it output a little bit more damage, but here we are. All the while, though, it's nice to see another skill to kind of mix into our combos. And it basically gives Bow a variety instead of just constantly dash dancing. On certain monsters, this thrust will definitely be easier to use than others. Slow moving or monsters with longer windups to their big attacks is definitely where this stake will really shine. So I hope this helps you guys out if you guys are deciding to try the bow and check out the new skills. I've finally switched up from Insect Glaive to my second favorite weapon, so I'll have a few more videos on bows shortly. Additionally, I am working on the Evasion series videos and those are going to be coming out very soon. So if you're trying to improve your hunting skills against certain monsters, be sure to subscribe and look forward to those Sunbreak monster breakdowns. So that's about it. Until next time guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, be happy, keep hunting. Sky Sensei is out.